الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعد اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلت سهلا وأنت تجل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم إني أعوذ بك أن أشرك بك وأنا أعلم واستغفرك لما لا أعلم We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ikhlas with the bad and bless us with ilm nafiya wa rizqan tayyibah wa amalan mutaqabbilin Continuing on in our treaties, Nawaqid al-Islam we reach the second naqid min Nawaqid al-Islam where Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab says so continuing on in the second uh, nullifier of the Islamic faith where the Shaykh said الثاني من جعل بينه وبين الله وصائت يدعوهم ويسألهم ويتوكل عليهم كفر إجماع. And the Sheikh said that whoever puts between his self uh, an intercessor between his self and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and supplicates to them and ask of them and seeks refuge or relies and puts all their trust in them then they have disbelief in uh, by consensus of the ulama of the scholars of Islam of the Muslims in fact because that negates tawhid entirely because tawhid is establishing the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone that everyone can have this direct relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're not in need of any imam or priest or preacher or monk or anyone or saint to come between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't have to supplicate to the angels or repent to them or to any inanimate objects or living uh, creatures. But rather all of our supplication, all of our worship goes to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala and that's what Islam calls us to. That is what the true religion of Islam is, is that it is the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and avoiding shirk, avoiding polytheism and that which calls us to polytheism. So the second naqid min nawaqid al-Islam is illustrates for us this important principle that we should avoid shirk at all costs and that there is no benefit in supplicating to Allah to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that all worship belongs to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and in the last uh, dars that we had the last lesson we read some statements of bin baz rahimahullah ta'ala al imam bin baz the former Mufti of Saudi Arabia Rahimahullah Ta'ala Rahmatullah Alayhi and the Sheikh had mentioned some very important benefits of why people fall into this type of shirk why people uh, supplicate to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala especially the kabur, especially the graves and the inhabitants of the graves and that they seek an intercession from the inhabitants of the grave who can't even intercede for their own on their own behalf nor could they prevent death from overtaking them that's just from the point of logic so it's a very strange and alien phenomenon foreign to the religion of Islam which is the religion of pure Tawheed, pure monotheism. The Shaykh mentions uh, one of the main reasons is being jahil, that the people are ignorant. And I wanted to read another statement the Shaykh mentioned uh, in relation to this. He said, as far as the people who uh, go to the graves and go to the dead saints and the people who seek any type of intercession uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said جهل, he said all of that uh, is from ignorance it's from 
all, all of those things happening, all those that false ibadah, is from ignorance. وَقِلَّةَ الْبَصِيرَةَ بِهَذَا أَصْلَ عَظِيمٌ And from a lack of insight and understanding of this أَصْلَ عَظِيمٌ which is Tawheed, you know, of this foundation of the Islamic religion. فَعُبَادُ الْبَدُوِي وَعُبَادُ الشَّيْخِ عَبْدُ قَادِرَ وَعُبَادُ الْحُسَيْنِ وَعُبَادُ غَيْرِهِمْ مِنَ النَّاسِ أَصَابُهُمْ بَلَا مِنْ هَذَا السَّبِيلِ جَاهَلُوا حَقِيقَةَ تَوْحِيدِ وَجَاهَلُوا دَعْوَةَ رُسُولِ وَأَلْتَبِسَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ الْأَمُورِ فَوَقَعَ فِي الشِّرْكِ وَأَسْتَحْسَنُهُ وَجَعَلَهُ دِينًا وَقُرْبًا So the Shaykh mentioned that those people who worship Bedawi and worship Abdul Qadir Jailani and worship Hussein and worship other them from amongst the people that a great fit, a great trial has befallen them in this path that a great test and a great uh, problem has befallen them and that they have uh, they are ignorant with regards to the reality of Tawheed and they are ignorant with regards to the call or the propagation of the uh, of the prophets alayhim afdal salatu wasalam and that they have been deceived by all of these affairs this this false ibadah and for that reason that they they fell into shirk they fell into polytheism and they actually beautify it and they have made it actually a part of their religion so instead of practicing Tawheed they actually practice shirk and they seek to come closer to Allah through shirk because of course they say we only worship those things or we only supplicate to uh, Sayyid Bedawi and Abdul Qadir Jilani and Hussein to bring us closer to Allah this is their their arguments in essence that though they are righteous and we are sinners and we need them to come closer to Allah because they were righteous people so this is their argument so they have actually made that a pillar and a part of their religion which is based upon shirk instead of making tawheed the the fundamental the assas of their uh, of their religion and their qurba and they're seeking to come closer to Allah then the shaykh said rahimahullah ta'ala he said wa ankuru ala man ankara alayhim and they actually um they actually refute or den uh, uh, disregard those people who try to uh, who try to correct them. They uh, do the opposite. Instead of accepting advice, they refute them. They negate what they're they're trying to invite them to, which is tawheed. So, meaning, if you see someone who's calling. Uh, uh, someone righteous or whoever they're supplicating to and you admonish them they actually admonish you and say you are the uh, mubtada you're the one innovating in the religion by not going to the saints by not going to the graves by not supplicating to Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, and by disrespecting the Prophet wasalam, and not supplicating to him this is what they actually say this is their argument this is why you find often that Ahla Tawheed those people from Ahl Sunnah who are trying to call to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, in its pure form according to the Salaf al Salih Ridwan alayhim that they are actually persecuted that they are actually called innovators that they are actually made takfir of you'll find how many Sufis extreme Sufis that make takfir of Ahl Sunnah they call them Wahhabi they call them this they call them that they call them uh, you know disbelievers they call them apostates why? because they propagate pure Tawheed and they don't their argument is is that they don't Ahl uh, Tawheed do not respect the awliya, the saints. They don't respect the great ulama. They don't respect the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam because they don't supplicate to them. 
they don't give them their status with Allah, that they have a higher status than us and they should be prayed to. They should be their graves should be beautified. Their graves should, we should sacrifice animals on their grave. This is their argument that they believe that it is actually a disrespect, that you're disrespecting those, those people who have greatness and have great uh, manzil with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have great status with Allah, the Lord, the creator of the heavens and earth, that, and that we should, we should seek to come closer to Allah through them. And by not doing so, you've disrespected them and you are not practicing true monotheism. So you see how shirk becomes tawheed and tawheed becomes shirk with ahl bidah and especially ahl bidah who have bidah mukaffara, who have the bidah which takes you out of the fold of Islam. They actually turn uh, shirk into tawheed and they turn bidah into Sunnah, which no one has the right to, uh, they have no authority to do so. Then the Shaykh mentioned, Rahmatullah alayhi, he said, وَقَلَّ أَن تَجِدَ فِي غَالَبَ الْأَمْصَارِ الْعَالَمِ الْبَصِيرِ بِهَذَا الْأَصَ الْعَظِيمِ بَلْ تَجِدْ مَنْ يُشَارَ إِلَيْهِ بِأَصَابِعِ وَيُقَالْ أنه أنه عالم وهو مع ذلك مما يعظم القبور التعظيم الذي لم يشرع الله ويدعو أهلها ويستغيث بهم وينظر لهم ونحو ذلك. So the Sheikh mentioned some great benefits here. He said, رحمة الله عليه. He said. And it is rare that you find from most uh, uh, most of the places in the world an alam, you know, a a a, a scholar that has uh, this this insight, this knowledge, this wisdom of this great asal alim, meaning tawheed, that they that they have true knowledge of tawheed. It's rare when you travel around the world. You know, the, the ulama, the warath al-anbiya, they're, they're rare. Those people who traverse that path and are truly on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and calling the people to tawheed, they're rare. He said, rather you'll find people, you'll find in, in those places, in many places in the world, people who point to them with their hands. You know, they, they point to people and they say, verily this person is an alam, this person is a, a great scholar. And with that, the, the person that they're pointing to, they are people who uh, glorify the graves and the inhabitants of the graves to such an extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them no authority to do so. Allah has not legislated this at all. And they supplicate, they supplicate to the inhabitants of the grave. And they seek refuge and support from them and they sacrifice animals to them and other than that from the various types of worship. So this shows us that this is the way the people imitate the people of Jahiliya. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Men tashabbaha bi qawmin fahuwa minhum. And so going back to our explanation where we left off, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah divided intercession into two categories, the prohibited and the permissible. He said the permissible type is seeking to follow the prophets and the angels as they set the best of examples and conveyed the message of Islam and whoever rejects this form of intercession is a disbeliever according to the consensus of the scholars. Also this entails seeking knowledge from scholars and their students as a form of intercession to come closer to Allah and learn his religion. So the intercession that we can seek in, in a sense from the scholars and from the students of knowledge is by their knowledge, not by kissing them, not by uh, having pictures of them and crying, 
and 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 in seclusion having fear in our hearts of the scholars or the the, the righteous people no that's not legislated but how do we seek the baraka from them is by their knowledge by practicing as they practice the religion and being humble as they are humble and so forth but we follow the sunnah of the messengers alayhim afdal salatu wasalam and first and foremost we are ordered to follow the sunnah of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wasallam so this is how we seek their intercession through their knowledge and by the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam but not by supplicating to them not by taking them uh and putting them between us and Allah, not by making repentance. We don't say, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we repent to you for our sins. We're so so wicked and so evil and I did this and I did this. No. But you convey you repent to Allah directly. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. In addition, asking a righteous living person to pray for you is permissible in the Sharia. However, seeking intercession from the dead or the prophets by praying to them or supplicating to them is shirk. So one should not say, O oh Muhammad, I seek your intercession with Allah. Please ask Allah to increase my wealth. That's absolutely prohibited. The prohibited intercession is seeking to come closer to Allah by supplicating or praying to other than Allah. So this is the second type that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned is, a, is the prohibited type of intercession. And this is seeking intercession by asking those who are totally unable to fulfill what is requested of them, whether they be living or dead. So regardless of whether someone is, is alive or dead, if they are unable to fulfill that request, it is known, then that is impermissible. And that can, that can constitute shirk, which can take you out of the fold of Islam. For example, if you sit in your room and you have, uh, you pray to someone, you, you not pray to someone, but even that you request of someone something that they're unable to do. They're outside of your room or they're in your room, even if it's a righteous saint. And you say, oh, Sheikh so-and-so, or oh, oh, Saint so-and-so. Can you uh, please, you know, I have my wife here in the other room. Can you make her, uh, you know, you know, she's barren. Can you make it that she's able to have a child? Or, you know, my wealth is very limited. Can you please increase my wealth? Even if they're in the room, we know that no one has that ability. No one has the ability to fulfill those things. But rather they can supplicate on your behalf. They can supplicate as well. Please pray for me. I'm having difficulty in my life. I need Allah to increase my risk, my wealth. Please supplicate to Allah. That's permissible. But to ask them to do things they are unable to fulfill, then that can constitute shirk. And min baba ola, first and foremost, if they are not uh, 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 alive, of course, someone who's dead. The dead can could not even prevent their death. They cannot prevent their sickness. They cannot prevent the pain that they received during the time of death. Or they could not make it easy upon themselves. They do not have control about what's going on in the grave for them. So how is it they can help you? Allah the Almighty says, and they worship other than Allah, those who cannot harm nor benefit them. And they say, those are our intercessors with Allah. Surah to Yunus, uh, verse uh, 18. Sheikh Abdulaziz al Rajahi says, As for asking the living to forgive you of your sins, or save you from the hellfire, or to increase your wealth, or assist you against your enemy, or not to prohibit you from paradise, then this is shirk, as he does not have control over those affairs. So the conditions for shifa or intercession, there are conditions actually, two conditions that the scholars mention that are taken from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa la, wa la Wasallam regarding shifa or intercession. He said, uh, number one, first and foremost, is the permission for intercession comes from Allah alone. And number two, the, per, the person being interceded for must be a Muslim as Allah is only pleased with those who worship him alone. The evidence for those two conditions uh, is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he said, How many from the angels in the heavens do not possess intercession, anything 
uh, do not possess from intercession anything except after obtaining permission from Allah for whoever he wishes and is pleased with. So that shows in that verse the two conditions are, uh, are both uh, combined in that verse alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, how many from the angels, this is the angels, the angels are not disobedient to Allah. How many from the angels in the heavens do not possess from intercession anything except after obtaining permission from Allah for whoever he wishes and is pleased with. Second, the second condition, who he's pleased with. So Allah must, it must be someone who Allah is pleased with. And who is Allah pleased with? Ahla Tawheed, the people of Islam, Ahla Islam, the people who follow the prophets and messengers, alayhim after salatu wasalam, the people who worship Allah alone, Ahla Tawheed, the people who stay away from shirk, as the Prophet sallallahu mentioned about the people, the sab'un alf, who are the 70,000 people who will enter paradise uh, without being um, uh, called to account for what they did, nor will they be punished. And the, the Sahaba, they, they, when they were, they, they pondered over this. They didn't know who could this be. Is it the people who embraced Islam and uh, when they were young and they always practiced Tawheed? Was it the people who did this? But the Prophet ﷺ clarified for the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, who they were. That those were the people. La yastarqoon wa la yatatayaroon wa la yaktoon wa ala rabbihim yatawakaloon. These are the people who had pure uh, uh, taqwa and pure um, tawakal. They, they relied solely, they put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they didn't go to other people to, uh, for, uh, you know, they didn't, uh, you know, look to omens. They, they had pure tawheed. And they didn't practice, um, you know, seeking ruqya and, and other things from other people. But instead, they did it upon themselves. They, they made ruqya by, uh, by, uh, by themselves, by reading the Qur'an over themselves to cure themselves. They didn't go seek this from other people. That this is pure monotheism. This is pure tawheed and pure trust in, 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 in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what we want to be is of Ahl tawheed. And Ahl tawheed are the ones who uh, will have intercession from the Prophet sallallahu in the hereafter, but not in this life. It's not in this life that we will have intercession. So it is absolutely from shirk. Uh, that seeking uh, intercession from other than Allah. And we'll read uh, a last thing in closing on this very important second um, uh, nullifier of the Islamic faith, thing that takes a person out of the fold of Islam. And as we mentioned, the first one at the Ras al Amr is being shirk, is that being polytheism. And the second one is seeking an intercession from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seeking an intercessor, intercessor to come between a, a, a person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is a part of shirk. This is actually a specific type of shirk being mentioned after the general category of shirk. The Hayat al Kibar ulama, the, the, the panel of the uh, permanent committee for scholars in Saudi Arabia, they were asked about seeking help from prophets and uh, awliya, the saints. The questioner said, two groups holding opposing views. The first group maintains that seeking help from prophets and awliya constitutes kufr and shirk. They give evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah in support of their view. The second group maintains that seeking help from prophets and awliya is permissible because they are the chosen, sincere servants of Allah the Exalted. Which of the two is correct? The Hayat Kibar Ulama, they answered by saying, asking anyone other than Allah for help, to bring healing, to make it rain, to prolong one's life, or similar requests that lie in the power of Allah alone is a form of major shirk associating others uh, with Allah in his divinity or worship that takes a Muslim out of Islam. Likewise, seeking help from the dead or absent beings at the time of dua 
such as angels, jinn, or humans to bring about benefit or ward off harm is an act of major shirk. Allah the Exalted does not forgive these acts unless sincere toba, repentance to Allah follows, meaning that a person commits this, this act of polytheism, but then they repent and they leave that. They come back to the worship of Allah alone. Such forms of seeking help are in, in uh, themselves acts of worship and means of approach or coming closer to Allah. Thus, they are not permissible to be offered to anyone other than Allah because their worship. Worship is only uh, to the Lord of the heavens and earth. Evidence in support of this ruling is the ayat in which Allah the Exalted teaches His servants uh, You alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. We worship and ask you alone, Allah. And Allah the Exalted says وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ And your Lord has decreed that you worship none but Him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ دِينَ هُنَفَا And they were commanded not, but that they should worship Allah and worship none but Him alone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا And the mosques are for Allah alone, so invoke not anyone along, uh, with Allah. It is authentically reported that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, If you ask, ask Allah. And if you seek help, seek it from Allah. Also, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another hadith reported by Mu'adh, the right of Allah due from his servants is that they should worship him alone, not associating anything with him. And anyone who dies while still invoking a rival in worship or divinity to Allah will enter hellfire. Seeking help from anyone other than Allah is shirk. Unless the help needed is, is, in, uh, is, is within the scope of ordinary human ability, which Allah the Almighty has provided mankind with and enabled them to use, such as seeking help from a doctor to treat a sick person, or from people to feed the hungry, or provide water to the thirsty, or give money to the poor, etc. These and similar acts are not shirk. Rather, cooperation among people in life and livelihood. Likewise, it is permissible to seek help from living people who are not present at the time, uh, at the same place, uh, via material methods like posting, wiring, and phone calls, and so forth. As for the life of prophets, martyrs, and oliya, they have a special life in Al Barzakh whose reality is known to none except Allah. It differs from worldly life. This shows that the view held by the first group is the correct one, namely those who say that seeking help from anyone other than Allah is shirk. May Allah grant us success. May peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his family and companions. And may Allah subhanahu wa taala have peace and blessings upon all the prophets of his, uh, the prophets of God, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And may Allah subhanahu wa taala protect the ummah and protect all the nations from worshiping other than Him, from any and all the forms of polytheism, because none is, has the right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa taala. And until the next time, wa sallallahu wasallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wasallam.